In this lesson, we'll learn how we can add forces such as gravity to our 3ds Max particles. All right, so now that we have our super spray particles that are set up, let's now start to use gravity to begin pulling these down in a little bit more realistic fashion. All right, so let's go ahead and I'm going to press Alt W on my keyboard. And let's start by going to the top view. All right, so let's go over to the Space Warps. This is going to be found under the Create menu. We'll go down to Space Warps and Forces. So you can see we have uh, Motor, Push, Drag, and also in here we have Gravity. So let's add this in. Then we can just drop in our Gravity Controller anywhere. And once we have that, I'll just right-click. And again, I'll go back to my Perspective View, just pressing Alt-W. Right, we can just move this down and out of the way. It really doesn't matter where this gravity is positioned. So as we start to scroll through here and scrub through the timeline, you'll notice that this gravity really doesn't seem to be having an effect. And that's really exactly what we have. So any kind of forces that we drop in will not have any kind of an effect on our particles unless we explicitly connect them together. So let's start by just selecting our particle system and we need to use this feature up here called Bind to Space Warp. This can be found underneath our top menu here. So let's click on our Bind to Space Warp. Let's start by just clicking on our particles here, and you'll notice my icon will actually change, or my cursor will change once I move over this area. So let's click, and essentially now drag onto the Space Warp that we want. And again, you'll notice that as I'm dragging, we have just the normal cursor, but as soon as we grab a Space Warp, you notice our cursor changes. Now once I have this selected, I'll now let off my mouse button. You notice for just a moment that Space Warp actually turned white, which is showing that there was a connection made. And now if I start to scrub through my timeline, now our gravity is starting to pull these particles down, just as we would expect. All right, so if you know you're going to be working with particles that require gravity or other types of forces, I would recommend actually connecting these forces before you start to concentrate too much on getting your particles motion to look perfect, because as you can see, adding these types of forces will pretty drastically change the particle behavior. So now that we have this connected, let's select our particles again, go back to the Modify panel, and we can go back to our Super Spray. You'll also notice that once our Space Warp has been connected, that now we have this gravity binding that is listed inside the Modify panel of our Super Spray. All right, so again, just another way of seeing that these have been connected together. So let's go back to the Super Spray. And now that we have our gravity connected in here, we may want to adjust the speed and some of the variation of our speed. If we want these particles to maybe reach out a little bit further before they get pulled down by the gravity. There we are. All right, very nice. So if we want to connect any other uh, kind of space warps in here, it's just this exact same procedure of just adding in, let's say, something like wind or drag. Once you have that in, you will need to go through the space warp binding process for every one of your forces. Now, let's take a look at how these particles will actually render out. So if I were to, uh, let's say, just render the current frame. So let's come in here and render this out. If you look very, very carefully, we could see these very, very tiny little dots that are actually our particles. Now, in my case, you can see they're almost impossible to see. So let's select these, go back into our Modify list, back to our Super Spray. Let's scroll down, and we can control our particle size. So let's start to increase this. Let's say in my case, something like 10 centimeters, although the settings that you use for your particular scene may be very, very different depending on the overall scene scale that you're working with and the size of the particles that you want. Now in my case, you can see that those are a little bit easier to see. Let me go ahead and switch this to my perspective view for the rendering process. That way we can actually see these a little bit more up close. All right, and if I just want to render this again, I'll just press Shift Q on my keyboard. All right, very nice. So we can see our particles, and they're sort of this triangle shape. So if we scroll down, open up this particle type rollout, you can see that right now these particles are set to a triangle. Now we can actually see this if we were to come back up to the top and take a look at our viewport display. Right now it's set to ticks, but if we were to set this to mesh, now we could actually see what this looks like. And now we can get a better idea of what we need to do as far as our particle size and things like that. We could also vary the size of our particles. 
So if we didn't want all of these to be the exact same size, we could do that. All right. We can also start to choose some different uh, types of geometry to render with. So if we wanted cubes or, let's say, a facing, which is essentially just a billboard that will always be oriented towards your camera, or maybe a sphere, in my case. Now, once we have this set, we can start to adjust the size. In my case, I'll bring this down to roughly about 6 centimeters. That looks like that should be pretty close to what I need. Okay. Now, looking at this, you can see that we uh, wind up with some nice little spherical particles, but they really don't look like sparks. Normally, a spark would have a pretty bright uh, feature to it. So let's go into the Material Editor. I'm just going to press the M key on my keyboard to open this up. And what we can do is essentially assign any kind of material to these particles. So let's go in. I'll start with just a standard particle. I'll take the Ambient and Diffuse, bring this down to black turn on my self-illumination, and let's give this kind of a nice bright yellow color. There we go, something nice and pale to kind of make it look like it's being illuminated. And now let's go ahead and just move this over to the side. And now I'll just take my material, drag the output right onto my particles. And now if I render again, just pressing Shift Q, you can see these particles now have that material. All right. Now, at the moment, you can see these particles really don't look much like sparks, and a lot of the uh, looks that go into actually making a spark look like a spark is sort of this trail that we would normally get. So, if we wanted to get that, we could just simply come in and start to enable some motion blurring on our renders. All right, so let's go over into the Renderer tab, since I'm going to be using Metal Ray for this. Let's go to the Camera Effects, enable our motion blur, and re-render this. There we go. And now we get some decent looking streaks on that. If we wanted these to be a little bit longer, just start to increase that shutter duration a little bit more so that way we get a little bit longer streak from that motion blurring effect. All right, very nice. So let's go ahead and just close these out. Now if we wanted, let's say, another set of particles that are over on this opposite side of the ball, we wouldn't necessarily have to go through this whole process again of rebuilding. Just simply grab your emitter, I'll shift select and shift click and drag this over to the side we'll just list this as a copy and you notice as we scrub through the timeline that this will still maintain its connections to the space warps and other uh, settings that we have here now the downfall to this is that you can see that our two emitters are emitting particles that look absolutely identical so what we might want to do is to grab let's say this new emitter go to its modify panel and in its uniqueness, let's go ahead and give it a new unique seed. So that way it'll emit these particles out in a new pattern that now looks just a little bit different from the first one. All right, and again, if we were to come in here, press Shift Q to re-render. And there we are. Now, you may want to actually add some motion blur to these particles without worrying about motion blurring everything else in your scene. So if you did want to do that, we could do that by just setting up some uh, different scene states, as well as using some of the batch rendering features that are found in 3ds Max. So if you want to learn more about those features and how they can be used to help you out in this kind of a situation, you can go ahead and refer to our lessons on using the batch rendering, as well as using the scene states. So that's a look at how we can start to use some of the particle features and begin connecting things like gravity to our particles inside of 3ds Max.